Hi, this is Mark from Right Line Trading, and I wanted to uh, review our trades today, something I haven't done in a really, really long time, uh, and also talk to you about trading uh, tops and trading bottoms. I just listened to uh, a video uh, by, by somebody else who talks about um, doing just that, trading tops and bottoms. And never have I listened to such hogwash in my entire life. Uh, he's, he's not somebody I really know. Um, I mean, I have no, um, you know, no negative sentiment about, about this person whatsoever. And, you know, and bear him no ill will at all. But the information that he provides is just absolute nonsense. And I really want to talk to you about how to appropriately trade uh, tops and bottoms. Now this week so far we have six trades and we have six winners and we're up just under a thousand dollars and five of those six trades were all counter trend uh, trades trading double tops and double bottoms. Now he believes that you have to wait for a five wave pattern Not Elliott, not not a five wave Elliott wave, but some other uh, wave, which he doesn't really go into telling you how he uh, counts them. And after those five waves are completed, that is the end of a trend. Then you wait for the market to come back up to that to to, to the fifth wave top and take a short. Now it's, it. You, according to the guru, you don't take this short off of any area of resistance to the downside or support to the upside. You just take it in the middle of nowhere. In addition, he doesn't acknowledge the fact that if a wick on the second candle breaks the high of the wick of the first candle, the trade is nullified. What that wick does is not create a double top. It creates a new high. Uh, trading market structure in these, in these instances is extremely important. And you can't break the high of the previous candle or you don't have a double top. Or if, you, or if the second candle breaks the low, you don't have a double bottom. In addition, your entry candle should always be, now this isn't a trade, I'm just giving this as an example, the entry candle should always either engulf the previous candle or it should be a dark cloud cover to the downside or a piercing candle to the upside. Now a dark cloud cover is simply a candle where the body here penetrates at least one half the body of the previous candle to the downside or one half the, the uh, body of the previous candle to the upside. That's called a piercing candle to the upside, a dark cloud cover to the downside. You want to take a trade where there's a lot of selling conviction on a short, a lot of buying conviction on a long. I have no clue what, the, what, what is being talked about in this five-wave pattern. Now remember, 90%, 95% of all day traders go broke. And the reason they go broke is, is they listen to the same old claptrap that, it, that is um, simply redundant stuff that has been busting generations of day traders out of the market year after year after year. I mean, people should understand, and you know, th these these professed gurus should understand that what they're offering up to you is the, is, is is the same Kool Aid that people have been drinking for the last 15 years. There has to be a new kind of paradigm. I mean, none of what this this guru professes has been tested uh, by doing uh, two years of market replay data on on the analysis it's, it's, it's simply it's, it's accepted as true and that's the problem 
and we believe in the guru, and so we accept it as true, and when we get crushed and run over, we're the ones that suffer. This man does not have a trading room, doesn't trade in front of anybody live, and that's the reason why. So let's get into the real way to trade a top and trade a bottom. I'm going to show you that today because those are the two trades we took. And you can see this is our dashboard. We're getting alerts on, on bonds, notes, and the E-mini. And if we go to the right edge, you'll see that we've got the triple quants, background bias. Everything is set up for a short. We just don't have a signal. And if we go to bonds, you can see that right here we are on a whoops. That's a consolidation signal to the upside. The problem is I'm doing this fairly late at night and there isn't enough volume to really chug the market. And, uh, you know, th those alerts could continue to, uh, to uh, move on like that for a long time because although the markets are set up for a trade, there's really not much movement. So let's take a look at the real way you trade uh, reversals, double tops or double bottoms. And let's take a look at crude because that's where we got the trades today and that's where I believe we got uh, almost all the trades this week. Now, first of all, here's our first trade. Actually, this is the second trade we took today. Now, the market comes up and hits what I love. It hits a dual area of resistance. Now, the other guru doesn't look for any resistance to the upside just for the market to peter out on some five-wave pattern that I just, I don't see any waves here, <laughs> to tell you the truth. No matter how much I want to play around here, I see no waves. Anyway, it comes down here, comes up here. You're not going to take the long trade because it's into an area of dual resistance. Then you can see that this wick exactly equaled the high of the previous candle. You can see that the candle body is a dark cloud cover. It more than covers at least half of the up candle, the candle body. It's a perfect setup for a short. We took it and we got 13 ticks on the trade. And it didn't give us much, much heat at all. The market was ripe for a fall. Now, we, now this is a counter trend trade. Background bias is blue, telling us that multiple time frames are up. Um, they are aligned to the upside, but the light blue color tells us they're not trending up. And that, that all support to the upside's been broken, but we don't, we're not in a trending market, and it wouldn't matter this is a counter trend trade. We're trading against the direction of multiply aligned time frames. It does not matter. Now we continue and we got our second short. And here's the double top. Now here's the actual top. It's the wick. It is not the candle body. You can't break the wick here. Now, the market makes a perfunctory attempt to challenge it here and then eventually closes to the downside. You then get an up candle and then you get this down candle which, as you can see, is a dark cloud cover to the previous up candle it's one tick off the, the area of resistance, hasn't broken the pivot high, and close enough for you to take the move down. We took it and we got 14 ticks. Now, this is the setup. It's very specific. 
Now, we didn't quite break the value area high on the trade, but we took it anyway because these moves are so powerful. And if you look what happened, if we didn't exit on this reversal candle, we could have taken a move that went all the way down to here. Now, here's the key. It isn't any ridiculous five-wave pattern. What you look for is when there's an abrupt reversal to the upside like this, this is all, look at the volume underneath, right here. This is occurring on a burst of volume. The institutional guys are moving in and they're pushing the market up on ex extremely high volume. Now, if that high volume continues and the market's on crude is turning 2,000 or 3,000 contracts a minute, you wouldn't even consider shorting the market even here if it's still turning over a huge number of contracts. As long as there's institutional participation and we know they've created the uptrend, they can run that candle over and take you right out of the trade. What you wait for is institutional participation to end and for volume to move back to normal. You want to trade normal volume here and make sure these large institutional players have exited the move. And that's what we watch for. And that's what happened on this trade. All the institutional buying dried up. Uh, the market just sort of meandered around, eventually pushed up close to the pivot high, and then collapsed. That's what we're talking about when we talk about a double high. And those are the kind of trades that rarely fail. And I'll show you, I opened up the room this morning two seconds late. And actually, it was more like 15 minutes late. It was really unfortunate. Because look at this perfect double top. The market comes up here. There's no five-wave pattern here, whatever. Um, comes up to resistance. It does not break it here. It eventually comes back up to the same area of resistance. It does not break the, pr the high price. And then you get this beautiful engulfing candle, which engulfs the previous green candle. And down you go for 14 ticks. Now, I didn't take the trade because I hadn't opened. opened um, actually, the, the platform was open. I just hadn't arrived yet. So I was very upset at missing this 14 tick trade. That's a 200 to 250 minimum trade, closer to $300 on our ATM. That was very upsetting. And the other upsetting thing to me is that what we had was a triple bottom. Here's the move to the downside, and it's off support. Market tries to break support here. It doesn't. Here, it doesn't. And you've got now three green candles. Now, if you took the long here, which you could have, it's a double bottom. You wouldn't have been stopped out, but it would have given you a lot of heat. And there was no reason not to take it here. If you took it here, you got a little bit of heat. Either way, you got this nice winner in this channel. But you're trading a double bottom and a double top. And there's no five waves. So... This is what you need to look for, and this is what you need to watch. You're only looking for a minimum of a first target. Our ATM calls for a, a five-tick move. This would have worked as well. Now, this is at 6 o'clock in the morning, but here's the move up. Here's the move down. Here's the second test right here. 
it exactly equals the candle high of the this 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 B candle high. That high is never violated. You're in one tick below. It comes down four ticks, misses your first target, comes back to give you some heat, and then collapses right here to give you a nice trade. Uh, your entry is here. You're going to go down to here. So you get 10 ticks. Our ATM, that would be $250. So you can see... As long as you have the pattern down, and it is ex extremely important to make sure that institutional participation has, w has moved off the scene. Because we are, all of us have seen markets where crude just goes up and up and up on high volume. I don't care if it's formed five waves, eight waves, 19 waves, or 175 waves. As long as the institutional players are still pushing that market up on huge volume and they're going to make new highs. You may form a double, po a double top, but it's going to get run right over if crude is turning 1,500 or 2,000 contracts a minute. And w what we have here is our minute counter. This tells us how many contracts have crossed per minute not per candle. We don't care how many have crossed per candle. If you look at how many uh, uh, on volume per candle, you have two independent variables. The time it takes for the candle to form and the number of contracts. We don't want to look at, the, at, the, uh, at how long it takes the candle to form. We simply want a fixed time frame for telling us how many contracts are turning per minute. We can set that to two minutes or three minutes, whatever we want. But we've really gotten in the trading room a good feel for how many contracts is going to cross per minute on crude and just hit you right in the face that it's the institutional guys. When it goes over 1,000 contracts a minute, 1,500 contracts a minute, there's institutional participation. When it's trading between 400 and 600 contracts a minute, the institutional guys are, have walked, and you've just got a huge number of commercial traders moving the market at that time. If you're trading under 400 and you're at 300 and 200, it's probably a market you don't want to trade at all because it's being too thinly traded. And only a small, it only takes a small number of people uh, to move the market, and they can move it any way they like. Um, remember, we're only looking at market sentiment and market structure is telling us market sentiment. Market sentiment is being manipulated by just a small number of players. None of this is, becomes worthwhile. So we want to confirm that we have good volume on the reversal or the double top, but, but we want to make sure we don't have institutional participation. So I'm going to show you, let me see if we still have, so we had two trades today for 14 ticks and 13 ticks. And this is early in the morning. Now, this is a tr the second trade I took yesterday. Now, it went four. Five was our first target. It was a very risky trade, and I closed it at plus two. And then we had an eight-tick double top right here. There was the high. I like it when the second candle creates a lower high. It tries its best to get back up to the pivot, but it fails, and the high is lower. I call that a falling channel and a double high. We took the short, and we got eight ticks. And here's a 16-tick trade. Here's where the high exactly equaled the B candle high. There's the double top. Now, again, this is a great trade because it's coming off a strong area of resistance, and in a sense, it's an area of dual resistance. If you want to really trade, if you're, if you're going to trade a traditional double top, the top is here. 
But we've got an area of resistance here. We took it one tick below, we went down, and we made 16 ticks. I did the same thing here. This is the other um, short trade that we take. It's a break and retest of the 15. This is a, it's a more sophisticated trade, not a double top. And we made 15 ticks. I mean, you can't find a loser when you know how to tr counter trend trade. It is much riskier than taking a trend trade, but if you know what you're doing, you can do it successfully. And you have to know what to look for. And that's, I think that's all the trades we took on crude. Up, oh, this was another trade we took on crude, 22 ticks. But this is a trend trade. This is not double top, double bottom. Simply it move down, move up, and down we go for 22 ticks. You can see background bias is dark pink. We've got a move out of consolidation, which are absolutely terrific trades. We've got the quant line here, red. The, the candles outlined in red. Order flow and momentum are with us to the downside. This is where you get your nice runners. And we got 22 ticks. So if you follow the rules, stay conservative, and understand how to counter trend trade, it can be very lucrative. You just have to be extremely careful. So I hope that you, you got something out of this. Don't look at an oscillator and don't look at a MACD. It, it, when, the, when they are working off your trading chart, they provide you with no predictive value as to how price is going to move into the future. They simply are moved by price. They are not independent variables. They are dependent variables. They are moved by price. They don't move price. And they are useless. And all they're going to do is fake you out. I mean, this man sticks an oscillator up and he sticks a MACD up. All ass assimilating data from the trading chart. They're the most useless indicators ever conceived together uh, uh, under any circumstance. But they're even worse when, they're just, when you're just taking them off your trading chart. And they always look great when you, when you take them off your trading chart because they mimic price. When price falls, the oscillator falls. When price falls, MACD falls. So in retrospect, they look great. But try to use them as a predictive tool to tell you how price is going to move in the future. And boy, look out. You're going to be in that 95% in the day trading graveyard very, very quickly because they simply don't work. They provide you with no predictive power. What we look at are multiple higher time frames to define our trend. That's the background bias. And we look at correlative markets. Markets that move either in the same direction or an opposite direction with crude with a correlation coefficient of 0.7 or greater. We don't look at anything here that assimilates data from our trading chart. I don't, we looked at the oscillator. We looked at the MACD. We looked at four MACDs, uh, in fact. They do not work, and this is why we don't want you to walk off the same cliff that thousands of your colleagues have walked off of simply because they've listened to the same gurus feeding them the same garbage. Don't do it. So listen, everyone, have a really, really great night, and uh, I hope to see you in the trading room in the morning. Um, we're at www.rightlinetrading.com. Um, you can call us at 1-855-765-6681. We have a whole new system that trades off this dashboard. Uh, this dashboard allows you to monitor multiple markets. You can have a 15 dashboards up there. If you trade stocks, it's fabulous. This will only give you an, a visual alert and an audible if you want. When all the independent variables are aligned that are required for you to take a trade with incredibly high positive predictive value. And if you're, if you're a, a, a day trader with stocks, and you want to wait for, for a stock to line up for you to buy a trade, you can watch 30 or 40 stocks with the dashboard, with dashboards from here to here. And when, if they will not, and, and you only open the stock 
or bring the chart up when the alert goes off. So again, everyone, have a great evening. I wish you the best of luck in trading, and I hope to see you in the trading room. Take care.